Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema and Bio.com studio up here at TIFF, Mr. Kevin Smith. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled that anybody still wants to talk to me after last night. <laughs> well, that was last night, but then um, obviously there was, a, there was also the... You, you tried to reinvent the way the press worked in this sort of junket setting too. I guess. And then ruffled some feathers. But in I when, think in a, in a good way, back at, with uh, Red State. With Red State. Yeah, yeah, with Red State. Red State was a real, like... Uh, I don't like the way um, my art is being presented, and I can't complain about it unless I do something about it. You can either sit there and bitch, or you can be changed. So yeah. it's like, instead of going like, they're spending too much money to release a movie, like I was really incensed, Clerks 2 costs five million to make, 10 million to release in marketing. So I was like, I, I, there's gotta be a better way. Rather than sit around and go like, it better be, there has to be a better way, and why won't it change? I said, all right, let's just try it another way. And so I did that with Red State, and part of that was just like, I don't need to do the process the way it's normally done. You know, I'll talk to whoever wants to talk to me, but I was counting mostly on the long tail of the audience that follows the podcast, and it kind of worked out. It was nice. This movie has a distributor, thankfully, A24. That takes the heavy lifting off, because the only thing, I loved the entire Red State experience, but, like, I didn't realize going into it, when you self-distribute a movie, you yourself distribute the movie. So I was up at, like, 4 in the morning, doing press for back east uh, and then all across the country like right up to the time we did the gigs so there's so many things that you're doing yourself it's nice to be with a24 and they take care of a lot of things and also they're such smart marketers man they haven't like spent a ton releasing the movie which makes me feel great they're just do it wisely they're very strategic like last night we had all these like walrus masks on the crowd and took a picture of that and it's crawled all over the internet you know so and that costs like you know you had to make the mask but not that much yeah doesn't cost the, the cost of putting a commercial on tv or something so this company is the right fit for this movie if anybody knew how to release a movie about a guy turns another guy into a walrus it is a24 and that's probably not the first time they've had that compliment it is true i think they have it on their business card. <laughs> yeah. we know how to market a movie where a guy turns another guy into a walrus yeah walrus yes <laughs> hashtag yes um, talk to me about that. That was pretty cool. Like, it, the Walrus Yes thing was when we did this podcast, uh, episode of Smodcast called uh, The Walrus and the Carpenter, episode 259 it was. Um, at the end of it, you know, I fell in love with the idea of like, this Walrus movie would be kooky. We read the story online uh, some, uh, at the website gumtree.uk. There was a guy offering room for rent in exchange for all you had to do was dress up like a walrus for like two hours a day couldn't talk like a human, you'd throw you fish and crabs and stuff. So like, it, it captured my imagination, me and Scott Mosier, the guy I do Smodcast with, were like cracking up about it. And we started building this dopey little horror movie, not without intending to make it, we were just like, oh, you're gonna show up, this guy's gonna knock you out, sew you into that suit, you're gonna be like the human walrus and stuff like that. And so it went from there to, you know, you can listen to it, it's like about a half an hour long discussion where you can hear me just fall deeper and deeper in love with the idea of a movie about a guy who turns another guy into a walrus, and then I get sad, because nobody's ever going to make the movie. And you can hear me getting incensed, like, why won't somebody make this? This is just as stupid as The Purge. Purge worked. Why wouldn't this work? And then I remembered I was a filmmaker. I was like, all right, maybe I'll try it myself. So I put it out to the audience of the, of the podcast. I was like, if you think it sounds like a cool thing, hashtag on Twitter, Walrus Yes. If you think it's stupid, Walrus No, and I'll, I'll drop it here. So the next day, there were thousands of Walrus Yes. And there was only one walrus no. And the walrus no guy was like, I feel like I should say no for the democratic process. <laughs> so there was a lot of support for it, which doesn't really mean much on the internet. They'll support any stupid ass thing. Particularly if I'm like, I'm going to make a movie about a guy who turns a guy into a walrus. They're like, do it, do it. Because if it works, great. If it fails, we get to watch. So there was enough like sentiment of, yeah, give it a shot. And that was just the boost I needed, man. Sometimes like total stranger taking a few seconds out of their day they didn't have to type walrus yes even if you listen to the podcast you could have been like oh that's funny and never interacted but the fact that they took their time and they're like you know what that does sound badass i would watch that that inspired me i was like all right i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna take a little step forward the other thing that really got to me about it was people listen to that podcast and there's some cats who like trying to make their miracle happen right they don't understand how to take the the journey let alone the single step you know they talk about the journey a million miles begins with a single step they never tell you the first step is the most impossible fucking step you'll ever take in your life. The last step's the easiest, but that first fucking step, uh, if, ev if everyone could do it, everyone could do it, they would do it. But yeah. a lot of people stop right there. So on the internet, on, on Twitter and on Facebook, I saw a reaction to that podcast, and this is what really captured my heart. There were three people in different words essentially said this, is that how it's done? Because they just heard us sit there and, and like make up stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm going to write this now. 
And it was a window into a process that like some people don't have. And for some people, just figuring out the first fucking step is impossible. They're ready to go, but they don't know, how do you get started? And to just hear two people sitting around goofing and me going like, oh, it could be this. And Scott going, yeah, you could do this. And suddenly at the end, I'm like, all right, I'm going to make this a script. They were mystified, but it was demystification because they were like, oh, my God, that's simple. Like, it's no longer this, like, man, you need the secret code. We open sourced it. And they were like, it's, that is how you start? And we're like, yes. So the fact that there were people dialed in watching and paying attention, and the fact that they were invested in that way of, like, show me how this is done. Like, I've been doing this 20 years, man. You've got to reinvent the job periodically, make yourself interested. And that aspect of it was interesting to me, where I could open source the movie and show them how it's all done. So that way, someone else sitting out there goes, if this fat asshole can make a movie about a guy who turns a guy into a walrus, and he's got no talent whatsoever, I can chase my dream as well. Um, a little modest, obviously, but, and not to appear <laughs> sycophantic, but when you made Clerks, mm. similar mentality. Very. Right? You made that at a time when people weren't putting that effort in. Mm. You showed that it could be done, that it had the reception that it got. And that transformed the way it really did. It was a pioneering step. It cha- I mean, I don't know what it did for others, but it certainly changed my life. You know, I was working at a convenience store, and then I made a movie about working at a convenience store, and then suddenly I never had to work in a convenience store ever again. So, you know, I, they paid me to make pretend for a living, and life changed. It was amazing. Yeah. So it, this movie feels closest to that. I was even saying last night at the screening that 20 years ago I was here with Clerks, and Clerks was a moment in my life where... You know, I was like, I want to see a movie about like me and my friends. I never see our lives or style represented in the cinema. I was like, why won't someone make a movie about me and my friends? And then I realized like one day, you know, one morning, I was like, dude, nobody gives a shit about you and your friends. Nobody's ever going to make a movie about you and your friends unless you do it. And so one day I did it and it changed my life. So years later, we're sitting on the podcast and it was the same thing. You could hear it in the, in the conversation. I'm literally like getting up upset because this movie doesn't exist and why won't someone make this and there's a snap like we're just like the clerks moment where i was like dude nobody gives a fuck about this walrus movie nobody's ever going to make a movie about a guy who turns another guy to a walrus unless you do it and so at that point you're just like all right well yeah i want to see it bad enough let me do it and that took me right back to clerks suddenly like the end was the beginning again yeah and now i've got the benefit of 20 years of ability of the job to craft something better you know it's like I, for a while in the job, I just started doing what other people did, or what's popular, what's marketable, you know, let's do what everyone else is doing. And that's not how I got here. I got here by swimming upstream. You know, that's what Clerks was, big swim upstream, and it got me into the pond. So I think I have to continue always swimming upstream. That's what I'm meant to do. I'm not meant to take the easy path. The path of least resistance is, is just not for me. It's always got to be something that's a little more interesting. Because if it's interesting for me, then it'll translate in the work. But if it's not interesting, if it's easy for me, it's never going to translate in the work. So talk about something that's not easy, which is blending horror and comedy mm. in a way that people will accept. Mm. Um, who to you did that best? Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg, uh, Shaun of the Dead, one of the greatest films ever made about a relationship. You know, It's all about how you have to kill off your best friend and your mother in order to have a normal relationship with somebody. So they did it in the context of a recognizable horror movie that actually fucking works. Like every aspect of it, this is not a spoof, it totally works. So, you know, they call it a Zomcom, whatever. But that movie for me is, is, is like a real benchmark in terms of blending the styles. But going even further back has got to be Landis in American Werewolf in London. When I was a kid, I'd see that movie and it was horrifying. But periodically, they would just stop and make some jokes. You know, even the dead guy picked up a Mickey Mouse doll. I was like, hi, David. He's like, stop that. Stuff like that, like, played for me. It, like, let out the tension. So you're like, <gasps> and then suddenly they make it funny, and you're like, oh, all right, well, I'm back on level ground. And then <gasps> they get your, your heart going again. So I owe a lot to American Werewolf as well. Very cool. And then just finally, we mentioned Clerks. I want to kind of give a shout-out to the jersey you're wearing. Um, why number 37? 37 on all the jerseys. Like, you know, I've, I've got a bunch of these, and I changed the crest only, but the, the shirt remains the same. Um, but 37 stands for uh, the, the clerks. There's a joke about like uh, Dante's like 37. My girlfriend said 37 dicks, and the guy goes in a row. So the 30. If I have to pick a lucky number, like that worked out for me. Clerks panned out. My life changed. So I tend to put that. And if you got to put a number, it might as well be that one. Very cool. Super appreciate you, uh, you. coming by and taking time with us. Me. Yeah, love it.